Alright, if you are watching this video, it should be Friday, February 12th. At least this was assigned on Friday, February 12th. And you should be in general 8th grade math. In other words, not Algebra 1. Algebra 1 will be a different video, uh, so you need to go back and look for that one. Uh, and it's an e-learning day. So this, is, this video is meant for an e-learning day. I might leave it up just as an extra resource. But um, if it's an e-learning day on Friday, February 12th, and you're in 8th grade uh, general math, then you're in the right spot. Okay. Um, today, instead of me giving you an equation and then you graphing the line, I'm going to give you a graph line, and then you're going to give me the equation. And we're going to do all of these in slope-intercept form. So we, we won't worry about converting anything to standard form or anything like that. So remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So we need to look at the graph. We need to figure out what m is and we need to figure out what B is. Finding B is extremely easy. B is the y-intercept, where the line crosses the y-axis. So the y-axis is right here. It crosses at positive one, two, three, so that means B is three. So we at least know that B is gonna be three. We know that much. And now we have to find the slope. So remember, slope is change in y over change in x. Up and down over left and right. And some people call that rise over run. Um, anyway, we need to find two good points on this line. By a good point, I mean ones that go right through the middle of those crosshairs. So this would not be a good point. This would not be a good point. One like this would be a good point. One like that would be a good point. If I only could go up, down, left, or right, how would I get from this point to this point? And that's change in y over change in x. So I would first go up two. Up two is positive two, and that's change in y. And then I would go right 1, which is positive 1, so that's change in x. So that if my slope is change in y over change in x, that would be 2 over 1, which is 2. In other words, m is 2. Well, if I know m is 2 and b is 3, replace m with 2, replace b with 3, and I get the equation y equals 2x plus 3. So that would be the equation to this line. Okay. Let's try another one. By the way, it doesn't matter If I start here and go up first, start here and go right first, start here and go down, start here and go left, none of that matters. If I started here and went down, well, going down is a change in y, but it's a negative action, so that would be negative 2. And then I would have to go left, which is a change in x. Going left is negative, so that would be negative 1. So that would mean I would get negative 2 over negative 1, which is still positive 2. Okay, so none of that matters as long as you remember up is positive, down is negative, and those are both changes in y. Left is negative, right is positive, and those are both changes in x. All right, let's look at another one here. Depending on where the line was, the, the origin is not necessarily going to be in the middle. So right here is the origin on this one. All right, let's take care of the easy thing first. Here's my y-intercept. It's positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So b is equal to 6. And then I need to find two good points. 
So here's a good point and here's a good point. Um, I like to start with going up or down first. So I'm gonna go down one. That would be a change in Y of negative one. And then I'm going to go right two. Going right is positive and that's a change in X. So that would be positive two. Remember, slope is change in Y over change in X. So that would be negative one half. So M is negative one half, B is six. So that would be y equals negative one half x plus six. Okay. Now, something else you might be thinking is, well, what if I picked two different points? For instance, what if I picked this point way over here and I picked this point way over here? You're just going to have to reduce, not to spoil it for you, but that's down three, so that would be negative three, and then this is right six, so that would be plus six. Your slope would be negative three over six, which reduces to negative one half. So you still get the same answer because slope represents a constant rate of change. No matter which two points you pick, you're going to get the same answer Assuming you remember, up is positive, down is negative, left is negative, and right is positive. Right? If you pick points that are close to each other, you won't have to reduce. If you pick points that are far apart, you'll get the same answer, but you'll have to reduce at the end. Which isn't the end of the world, but it's more work, so you might as well not do it. Alright, let's look at another one. Here's my origin. I'm starting to wonder if I ever have a y-intercept that's negative. Hopefully I remembered to do that. That would be kind of bad if I didn't. We'll make one up if not. Um, so, one, two, three, b is a positive three. And here's a good point and here's a good point. I'm going down one, remember that's changing Y, and I'm going right one, which is changing X. Down one is negative one, right one is positive one. So my slope is negative one over one, which simplifies to negative one. So when I write my answer, Y equals M X plus B, which is three. If this were a multiple choice test, something like I learned that, yeah, gross. you wouldn't ever see it written like this. They would go ahead and multiply these two things together. Negative one times X is negative X plus three. I'll accept either answer. This is, if you're kind of a snooty math person who you know, drinks your tea with your pinky out, you like this one and only this one. If you're uh, not that crazy, uh, you, you're fine with either one. So, but on a multiple choice test, you would see it this way 999 times out of 1,000, if not 1,000 out of 1,000. It's just more simplified. So, All right, let's try the next one. Hey, I did have a negative one, finally. Uh, so here's the origin. So my y-intercept is negative one, two, three, four, negative four. So b is negative four. Here's a good point, and here's a good point. Something else that I feel a little bit bad that I've neglected to say until now is you should know whether your slope's going to end up positive or negative. Because this line is rising, you should know at the end you're going to have positive slope. Okay, so I'll start here, and I like to go up or down first. That'll be a change in Y, which is positive 2. And this will be a change in X of positive 3. What happens sometimes, though, people get in a hurry, and they're like, well, that one's on top, so I'll write it as 3 halves. 
That's wrong. It's changing y over changing x. So it actually would be two thirds. Y equals mx plus b, which is a negative fourth. Don't write plus a negative four, although that's technically correct. Just put minus four. So y equals two thirds x minus four. All right, this time our origin happens to be the y-intercept, which means we have a b value of zero. Um, I'll just go ahead and use this point and this point. So we're gonna go up three, which again is a change in y of positive three. And then we're gonna go right one, which is a change in x of one. So that means my slope change in y over change in x is three over one. Go ahead and call three over one three. And we get y equals mx plus b. Once again, this is technically correct, but if it was multiple choice, you would never, ever, ever see it written this way. Go ahead and simplify and tell me that three x plus zero is simply y equals 3x. That's the preferred way. If you get that as an answer, I'm not going to mark it wrong. I'll probably scribble it out because it bothers me, but go ahead and simplify that. Just y equals 3x. That's the entire equation of that line. Two more, and then I'll let you work on your homework. All right, uh, here's the origin. So go up one, we have a y-intercept of one. Uh, again, I might as well just use that point. The next good point is right here. It happens to be the x-intercept. Uh, we'll go down one, which is a change in y. And then we'll, we'll go right four, which is a change in x of positive four. So our slope, change in y over change in x is negative one fourth. So we get y equals mx plus b. You might also see that written like this if it was a multiple choice test. It means the same thing. It might not look like it, but you know there's a ninja one right there. Where it's the same thing. Last one before I let you work on your homework. We have a y-intercept of positive four. Kind of neglected the negative intercept, so we're there. The negative y-intercept I did it once, so I guess that's that's okay. Uh, a good point here, so we're going to go up 3, which is positive 3, which will be my change in y, and then we're going to go right 2, which will be my change in x, and that will be a positive 2. 3 halves, so I get y equals 3 halves x plus 4. I lied. I, I'm going to do one more. Let's do... Well, you're going to see me type it in, but I'll type it in as standard form, and you won't know what it is in slope-intercept. So let's do 4x plus 2y equals negative 6. I wanted to do this one just to practice having a negative slope and having a negative y-intercept. I don't think we had one like that. So here's my y-intercept. It's at negative 3. So 
So B is negative 3. Here's a good point. So I'm going to go down 2 and write 1. That's changing Y and that's changing X. So your slope is going to be negative 2 over 1 or just negative 2. So y equals mx plus b. y equals negative 2x minus 3. All right, your homework uh, should be also in the same Google Classroom post from February 12th. Have a good weekend. Get your homework turned in.